And this is rather popular in our culture today. So the premise, is God good? Absolutely. Is God all-powerful? Well, to a point. And does evil exist? Well, it certainly does. And so the explanation works this way. And this is the guy, well, a guy named Rabbi Kushner who wrote, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? This is the answer that he came up with, and it continues to be a very widespread answer. And it goes this way. Of course God is good, and he wants nothing more than for all of his people to benefit and to prosper, and he has nothing but the best in mind for everybody. This is what God wants. And evil certainly exists. Just look around. We know it's there. It's all over the place. And how can this be? How can a really good God allow evil? Well, you know, he's doing the best he can. He's, he's working within the system the best that he can. He um, recognizes evil. It, it hurts him as well. And he really wants to overcome it. So he's trying. He's, he's, he's doing what he can with it. And so we, we need to recognize that he, he's upset too. And he would like to intervene. But, you know, some of these things, it's just a big world. And there's lots of things happening all over the place all at once. And he's, he's a busy God. And what Kushner ends up saying is essentially... You need to be patient with God, too. Cut him some slack. Because he's working on getting this whole thing under control, and we need to be understanding of God. So, in other words, is God all-powerful? Not really. Not really. He's very powerful, and he can do a lot of things, but he's not completely powerful. And sometimes what will be used here as well is they will slide in underneath this thing the whole kind of free will thing. And this one, I'll, I hear kind of a subtle thing. This is pretty subtle, but it's pretty insignificant. That, of course, God is all-powerful, but he won't thwart human free will. And so he really can't control everything because he's allowed free will. And so now once he's allowed free will, the door has been opened, and man has this ability to do his thing. And what are you going to do? And so, in a sense, what they, they argue is something like, well, God has tied his own hands. And now he, it's really kind of out of his control. He's turned it over to the people. They've made a mess of it. But what's he supposed to do? He, he, he's, got, he's got this thing of free will that he thinks is so important, and he values it, and he can't do anything about it. Yeah, Todd. He's almost a Superman. <laughs> he's kind of a Superman God. Yeah, there are limits on him. He can do a lot, but there are limits. And so you have a God who is limited. This is also the God of um, what's known as process theology. In process theology, you have the idea that the whole universe is becoming, progressing. It's a very kind of a uh, idea that grows, it fits in really nicely with Darwinism, the progression kind of a thing. So in process theology, the world is progressing along. Well, so is God. God's getting better at his job. He's figuring out how to do it. He's, he, he makes him a few attempts, you know. Um, he did the flood thing. You won't do that again. You know, he learns, and he's, he's making progress, too. So he's moving along. So this fits pretty well with this. That God is, yeah, God's God. But, yeah, he's, he's learning, too. He's, he's kind of like one of us, in a sense, and he's got, got things to work out, and he's getting better at it. So be patient with him. Yes? Can this be consistent with something like Genesis when God gives Adam dominion over the earth? Okay. Because we sinned, and messed it up, we still have dominion. Yeah. We just have dominion over a messed up earth. Yeah. Yeah, we do have dominion over a messed up earth. That's true. But could God do it differently? Well, yeah, if he wanted to revoke his agreement yeah. to give us dominion over the earth. Well, I mean, he could just say, you know, you guys have blown it, and you're, not, you're doing a bad job. I'm stepping in. That's it. We blew it. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of this mess. I'm tired of messing with you guys. I'm done. Would he have that prerogative? Could he do that? He helps him in the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how he threatens how it close frequently. It? <laughs> he threatens it a lot. So the problem with this premise is it undermines the concept that God really is all-powerful. Because to solve this problem of doing a theodicy by making God less than all-powerful, you end up with a God who tries. God who would like things to be different, but man, it's a, it's a tough, tough thing. It's kind of out of his control. Mm -hmm. Gotta be patient. This, I, would, I think is a pretty widespread idea. And I hear this kind of uh, thing coming from people. 
you know, and it's, it, it creeps into a lot of the popular culture. Kushro is, is a rabbi. Yeah, he's a Jewish rabbi. So, so he's a rabbi, <laughs> and as a rabbi, too, he would, he would believe also that, you know, God is omnipotent, too. <laughs> so so it, would, would he then be going against the, the core of the Jewish? He, he's just saying we've got to understand omnipotence a little differently than we think. Omnipotence doesn't mean do whatever you want. You've got to live within the limits that are there as well. Well, would the, would the Jewish faith, going back to yesterday a little bit, then call him a heretic for saying that? Oh, some would. Some wouldn't. I mean, Judaism is a, a funny animal. It's, it's all over the place. And you've got a few, a few who really take seriously what it means to be a Jew and the, what you call the orthodox practicing, you know, really conservative Jews. They're a pretty small number. Really small number, and they might read Kushner and say, "No, he's got it wrong." But then you got the vast majority of Jews who are, um, well, I don't know, that vast majority probably are just Jewish in name, at least in this country. And for them, it's just a culture, you know, eat matzah once once a year and do the Jewish thing, and it's who I am. But do they believe anything that, about it? No. <laughs> and you have another bunch of the Reformed who take it somewhat seriously, and they go to synagogue and they go to temple and do their thing. And but man, they're pretty pretty liberal too. And, there's all kinds of room for it. So Rabbi Kushner probably speaks for the majority of them. Okay. Just, it's, just, it's like Christianity. I mean, you got liberal off the wall, people who claim the name Christian, and you got really conservative people who claim the Christian. It's the same within Judaism, except they're the um, people who take it seriously are you know, even smaller minority than they are in Christianity. Okay. All right. So this is the first crack at it. How happy are we with this answer? Acceptable? Can we live with this? Why not? Because we're talking about God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God's God. He's all powerful. Is he really up there in heaven stewing because his hands are tied and he wishes he could do something else, but he just can't? You see, that's one of the problems even with this free will idea. And this is this is the attractive one for a lot of a lot of Lutherans even. You'll hear this kind of um well, you know, God would, but yeah, if he did, then he would be, we'd be, he'd be interfering with free will, and he won't do that. And you show me anywhere in Scripture where it says that God has given man a free will, and that's the sacred trust, and he's not going to violate that sacred trust of free will. You won't find it. This is a really popular idea, and we have assumed it, and it's very widespread among good Bible-believing Christians that, well, yeah, free will, of course. That accounts for everything. But the problem is, Scripture doesn't really teach that. And free will is much more appealing to us in our humanity and in our desire to be significant and to be our own person, but it really doesn't have scriptural support. So, the free will card, we'll see, that's a tempting one. We'll come back to that one, I think, talk about it some more. Talk, especially with friends and everything. Sometimes I start to think that people have different definitions. I mean, obviously, you throw a definition out, every, it's going to mean something to everybody else. Right. But, I mean, the concept of free will, yeah. I, everyone's got their own definition. True. Because I've had conversations where, oh, I believe that, and you get further into it, and they understand grace alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I have free will because they're confusing. I have choices on our, you know, I mm. can choose to drink the coffee, or I can choose not to drink. And mm -hmm. somehow, well, then I have the will, and that's free will. And I, from my experiences, it seems like there's a, a blending or a mixture of misunderstanding sure. of what the term means or Absolutely. the term is used way too... Well, it's used, it's used in a wrong context yeah. frequently. And I think there's also the case that people just don't realize that to hold on to one thing negates some of the other things. They just hold on to two contradictory things and happily go their way. That's not the first time that would happen in America. Okay? Yeah. With a lot of people who, who are struggling with this question and other questions, what, what it seems to me as though what they do is they do this like weird bargain thing where they look at God and they say, okay, if God conforms to my expectations, then I'll believe in him mm -hmm. or my perceptions or whatever it is, sure. you know. Sure. And, and it, it, it seems to me as though inherent in the actual definition or concept of God is this idea that he doesn't exist to fulfill our expectations. We exist to fulfill his. Right. So, so they got it backwards. Oh, like oh yeah. Right from Agreed. The go. Agreed. Absolutely. All right. That's true. So the first attempt is you try to 
go after that God is all powerful. And this is kind of an, this is actually pretty appealing. And it, it fits in well with, especially with the American Gestalt, because evil, that's fine, that's real. God is good, of course he is. Count on him, good. Grandfather in the sky, but you know, he can't do everything. And we're, and actually this is kind of comforting to us. And that's why I think Kushner's book was so popular. It sold like hotcakes, and it's still very popular with a lot of people. Because it's kind of a company to say, yeah, he's like the grandfather who's really powerful, but you know, he just can't quite do everything. And that helps to explain why problems still happen. And we, we're understanding. We can be patient with God. We can even forgive him. You know? And that's really cool. Because now we get to forgive God. And see, that puts us on a par with God in a sense. And so we have to understand him. And he has his limits too. And ah, oh, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. And that, that, this really kind of pumps us up. And I really think that's part of the popularity of this thing. Is he using scriptural support for these, I have, what I would call it, rigs? But. I haven't looked at it that closely. But no, you can find God appears to be limited. He limits himself on occasion. He'll do that. But if you really take seriously all powerful, you just can't abide by this. My contention, I want you to realize, is how much this sinks in and slips into our psyche and our thinking to kind of try to come to terms with this thing. All right. So if God is not, if we're not going to be satisfied with this explanation, that God is limited, 